was awesome. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so excited to finally be interviewing one of my favorite uh, pop culture, entertainment uh, commentators and bloggers. I've been following uh, you since the beginning, I think, because you still were uh, putting in your Carol City reunion videos when uh -huh. I was, when yes. I started watching that was you. The very beginning. Yes. Wow. That's how long I've been watching you. So I am so happy to have Quentin. Latham, aka Funky Doniva, here. You've been featured on VH1, uh, TV1, Essence Fest, and so many other places. So I'm just so excited to have you here. Thank you. And thank you. oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to fangirl too much because I'm like a oh, legit. <laughs> I'm a legit fan. <laughs> like I'm for real. Like I watch your videos. Like make sure that bell is on. I get my alerts and I tune right the fuck in. Thank so. you. I definitely appreciate the love and the support. <laughs> oh, most definitely. I want to get started from the beginning. If someone's okay. been under a rock and they don't know who Quentin mm -hmm. Latham, aka Funky Diva, is, like tell them how you got started with making video content for YouTube. So uh, the story goes, I was a boring corporate accountant, right? And it was one of those things where I was trapped into my career. I was making really good money and I, I was living a lifestyle that was commensurate to what I was making. I knew I was unhappy career-wise, but I was like, for me to, to shift careers at this point in my life, I would have to take a huge pay cut. And I just was, I was unwilling to do that. So I came up with the bright idea that, okay, if I had to be stuck doing accounting in the daytime, I would subsidize my creative side and my income by being a party promoter on the side and kind of throwing parties. And that would allow me to do the marketing and the personality thing. So I started throwing parties in Atlanta, which subsequently gave me a huge Facebook following. Like just as a normal person, I had to reach the 5,000 friend mark or whatever the case may be. Um, aside from that, I had a pretty active social life and my friends and I, the Real Housewives of Atlanta had just kind of come out mm -hmm. and we decided that our clique was going to be the Housewives of Atlanta. And of course, y'all can already imagine which housewife I was. I was Nene Lee. So that, that's October. From December, I'm cleaning up the house. I find the wig from Halloween under the sofa and I'm taking a break. I'm all musty and sweaty from cleaning up. And I'm taking a break and I put the wig on and I'm like, yeah. Yes, bitch. My hair is laid, hunty. <laughs> I'm just rifting, just, just having fun. I thought it was funny, so I sent it to a couple friends. And a friend of mine posted it on Facebook. And because he did that, and because I had so many friends on Facebook, the video traveled very quickly. And I was pissed. I was like, oh, my God. Like, why would you do this? My coworkers are going to see this. My family is going to see this whatever the case may be. But I've also been the same person that I don't run from my truth and it's like, well, shit, I did it. So whatever. The response was mixed. You had the guy saying, oh, you know, what's with this faggot shit with the wig on? Da, 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 da. And a lot of the females thought it was funny. And so then I just started doing my Funky Dineva character as a video journal. It was therapeutic for me. I realized that Dineva could get away with saying things that Quentin Latham couldn't. So I simply just started recording these videos, just ranting about random things. I ended up getting fired. And instead of interviewing for more jobs, a light bulb went off and said, you know what? You don't like what you're doing. Sending out your resume for more accounting jobs is literally auditioning to be miserable. And I had got an email from YouTube because these, these little videos I was doing was getting a couple views and I was making a few pennies on it. And I was like, you know what? If I can, I was getting unemployment and it was $1,400 a month at that time. I was like, if I can get these little videos to make $1,500 and I'm getting $1,400 from unemployment, that's almost $3,000 a month. You know, I can make that do what it need to do in order for me to survive. And then... Within six months, I was on VH1 doing the first Love and Hip Hop reunion, and the rest is just history. The ball just took off 
running from the end. So that's a very long story I condensed into a short story, but it happened kind of by accident. Yes. And that's amazing to me because I've heard your story and I think I forgot that part. Like, I didn't know that it was like something that you didn't put out. I knew you just kind of threw the wig on one day and was playing mm -hmm. around and I thought maybe you post, posted it for fun. I didn't even know you, that you didn't even post that like somebody else did and it took off. Yeah. And, and then it took off and then subsequently I came behind it and did it. And it wasn't until I got the email from YouTube and it started making a couple of pennies coupled with me having career unhappiness and being fired. I was like, you know what? Now that I'm fired, my bills backed up. I ain't got no money. What better time than to change directions when you ain't, you don't already have shit. I had nothing to lose. I had no money coming in. So I was like, the little money that's coming in with this is better than nothing. And at least I'm having fun doing this. And I was like, you know what? You're on to something here. Like people like this. And that's when I decided to kind of turn it into a business, a profession, a career. And that was uh, 10 years ago. You want to know what's funny? I was talking to my assistant the other day. I just happened to be in my YouTube back office. And I've got 4,700 something videos. No way. On YouTube. And I was telling him, I, I, I can't believe that number either. I don't even remember making that many videos. You want to know what's so funny? I don't even remember half the time. People tweet me with lines sometimes that are their favorite. And I have to think long and hard. I'm like, oh shit, that did come out of my mouth. So it's to your <laughs> point. I had to realize that that much time has passed or that I've been doing this and sustaining doing this for that long. Well, time flies when you're having fun and it, it really, it you're really a testament to like following your dreams and being happy with what you're doing. Uh, for me, what really connected with your videos with me with your videos and what made them so relatable is because not only are you from miami but we're from the same exact city the yeah. same almost damn near neighborhood because you said i think you went to myrtle grove right i went to myrtle grove uh-huh the carol city middle and carol city high and see i went to myrtle grove parkway middle then carol city okay. high and so okay. watching your videos i'm like i get the little things that you say like uh -huh. you gotta be from my area to understand if you say 183rd street and 27th right. avenue right <laughs> You know exactly what I'm talking about, the flea market parking lot. <laughs> how has that influenced your, I guess, the way you create content and how you approach a different subject? Because sometimes you get really deep and, and retrospective and introspective. Like, how has your upbringing uh, affected how you create content and what you say? You know, it, it's funny because um, Miami is sold up all in, out, and throughout everything I do. You know, Miami, we are a very different animal than the rest of the world. There's the United States, there's Florida, which is part of the United States, then there's Miami Dade County. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. We're a city, we're at the we're at the southernmost tip of the United States, but we're not southern in the regard of what people tend to think southern. It's very different. And so I think what's very interesting about what I do and why a lot of people find it diff find it funny and, and, and attention grabbing because it is so different. We've got our own dialect. We've got our own mentality. We've got our own way of dealing with conflict. And to be honest, the shit is funny. And a lot of people <laughs> don't understand it because it is unique to our region, but because it is so unique, they are intrigued. Mm -hmm. um, Miami has definitely shaped my sense of humor. Miami has definitely shaped the way I cuss a bitch out. Can't nobody out there cuss like a bitch from Miami. You, you just can't. Like, you know, you, you just, it's just a skill that you pick up very <laughs> early how to cuss somebody motherfucking ass out. You just do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even down to the motherfucking. It's just, it's just the Miami thing. And it, it, it's funny because very early on in my professional career, my Miami side, I actually used to run from. You know what I'm mm. saying? Because in corporate America, the things that make us uniquely Miami don't work mm -hmm. in corporate America. It just doesn't. Our way of dress, it does not work 
in the corporate world, but believe it or not, in the entertainment world, it's like a diamond in the rough. So I, I definitely celebrate Miami in that regard. Ah, oh, that's awesome. I really love how you put on for our city. Like, you're definitely mm -hmm. one of those people who I consider who made it, who are successful, and you know, doing that thing. So thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. Another reason why I wanted to uh, speak to you today is because of your new business venture. And mm -hmm. for me, I'll say I remember when the skin tea craze was going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I don't know, because I literally searched through all your videos today trying to mm -hmm. find that video. I thought it was like one that you did. Maybe you mentioned mm -hmm. it in another video. But I remember it was like a line that you said, like, y'all uh, holes in the back of Denny's or something uh, buying that skin wow. tea. Yeah. <laughs> and you was like, it's a scam. And I don't know why y'all doing this. And I don't see how y'all can listen uh -huh. to these people. And so I remember it shaping how I view the multi-level marketing um, businesses. Marketing. And I was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, this shit don't sound right. I ain't going to do this. Quentin said it. This, this shit must be <laughs> on, on not some scam or some shit. So to my surprise, a couple of weeks ago when I saw you post about it, I was like, wait, if he a believer, mm -hmm. then it must be some truth to it. So mm -hmm. kind of tell me like how you got into the is it ISO T? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah ISO T. Yeah, like, how, you get, how did you get into the multi level marketing? What made you a believer, so to speak? Okay, so here's what's funny what I felt then was true and genuine, and what I feel now is true and genuine. You know, at the time, right, with when I made this skin tea video, I was looking at the caliber of the people that were pushing it. And I was just like, girl, get your ghetto ass the fuck from around me. Your subjects and your verbs do not agree. I don't want to buy shit from you. I know your track record. You got a rap sheet about as long as a roll of toilet paper. You know, I, I know your history. You scam. You a stripper. You know, you set niggas up like that. That Those were the people who were at the forefront. And then now they're draped in all these diamonds and pearls and driving these fancy cars. And I'm like, girl get out of here like bitch you a scammer i refuse to believe you selling products making this type of money screw that forget you this that and the third and, and i meant that um mm -hmm. I, I meant that wholeheartedly at that time so then i make the skin tea video a couple years later i run into coach stormy in houston's in atlanta she runs up on me <laughs> she's joking <laughs> but she run up on me i gotta kick your motherfucking head and she said you know, I got some events coming up that I would like you to, you know, be a part of, whatever the case may be. Okay, fast forward another year or so, I actually run into Stormy in Miami at the at a museum event, and she was like, I got an event that I want you to participate in. It, I can use your comic relief, and it was the Girl Hold My Hand event. And so I went to that event, and I witnessed what she was doing from a motivational speaking aspect. You know, she was doing the whole T.D. Jakes, Tony Robbins, um less brown type of thing and in listening to her story it made me realize tony robbins and less brown they may not be able to reach the girl from the ghetto the young man from the ghetto because their lives and their lifestyles differ so much but she can and she's not doing anything different than these other people who are on the own network that we pay all this money to so that was the first thing that kind of softened softened me or whatever then everybody was trying to get me to do it for the longest and i still held on to the fact that this shit is a scam i don't want no parts of it it's a, the same preconceived notions everybody has one day i was cleaning up and i was like let me just take take a packet of this tea and i took the tea and it sent me to the bathroom and i had a very lovely bathroom experience and i was like okay there is something to this product and then i decided to do my own research then janae i started to feel guilty right because when you look at the structure of the business it is the exact same thing as avon it is the exact same thing as mary Kay or amway so i began to feel guilty because i was like okay why is it when white faces are associated with the business that i'm we're all gung-ho and we to buy now there's a black face associated with the business now all of a sudden it's a scam you mm -hmm. see what i'm saying and so for me i'm a very facts driven and logical person 
I said, okay, if, if it's the same business structure as Mary Kay, then I don't see the problem. Not to mention the fact that I had to analyze my audience. My audience is the love and hip hop crowd, the Real Housewives of, of Atlanta crowd. Um, they move on stuff like that. Now, let me not pretend and, and act like, oh, I'm just so health conscious and that money was not part of my motivation because it was. So then Corona hit and Corona overnight has wiped out people's incomes, livelihoods, everything. And it made me realize while my income had not been affected, that it could be one day. And that I needed to start working on ways to generate additional streams of revenue. So then my mind just said, well, listen, you took the product. I can stand by the product. I can speak on what it did for me. I'm not going to promise you that you're going to lose 10 pounds. I can tell you what it is it did for me. And if it did it for me, maybe it can do it for you. And if I can make money doing it, then I don't see the harm or the foul in doing so. Not to mention, I was intrigued by the fact that the, this particular company paid daily and it paid um, weekly and that I can get paid by helping other people who need the daily money or the weekly money get to the money. So that part was very motivating for me. And I was like, you know what, let me get in here and do this. And the first day I sold it, I think I made $160 the first day. And the second day I sold it, I think I made like $350. And I'm like, there are people who go to work for eight hours and don't make $150 in a day. So then, then of course, Money is the ultimate motivator. That's why all of us work. That's why we go to college to make money. So I'm like, okay, if I can start bringing in $200 a day, $300 a day, I had small dreams. I'm like a little extra ain't never hurt nobody. Just a little extra money. And that's what kind of got me into it. Um, that's what got me into it. And, it. and it's funny because now that I'm in the business and I understand how it works and I have a platform which was optimal, for selling things, um, it's just as long as I'm doing what I'm doing, I foresee myself being in a place where I would want to sell product in some way. What, what good is having this platform and not being able to leverage it that's for true. my advancement? You know, so that's kind of what changed uh, my mind about it. And it also made me realize something about myself. It made me realize that we can know so much sometimes to the point where we know nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I ripped these people business up and down because I just knew what I was talking about and didn't know a damn thing. Mm. And I could have missed out on an opportunity being so rushing to judgment and being so judgmental about something I didn't even have the facts about. Man, that's deep. And I think that's what makes you so unique is the fact that you'll come back and you'll be like, okay, I felt this way, but now this is how I feel. This is the, the facts that I'm presenting. This is why I felt this way. And so that's why I was like, I really wanted to dig in a little bit more with you because I'm like, there's a story behind this. Like why did Quentin all of a sudden say, hey, I don't feel this way anymore. And I think that kind of is a testament to like the legitimacy of the business. Uh, for me, you know, Stormy's from Miami. Ironically, her little girl grew up with my sister, like up the street, like one of her close oh, wow. friends. So I didn't know her personally, but I knew of her. And I met her when she was selling Organo Gold. And so I know she has been in the multi-level marketing um, for a while. For me, I never felt like the products didn't work. I always knew the products worked. I just always felt like it was a little... Um, untruthful to tell people yeah, that it was yeah. easy and then they could just do this easily and that's where mm -hmm. i kind of kind of fell off with it and then with stormy um not to attack her anyway but like i said i've seen her with organo go with mm -hmm. the waist shapers not waist shapers but mm -hmm. body magic. magic and then the skin tea and now mm -hmm. this so i was just like okay it kind of seemed like anytime the new fad came around she was hopping to that. So it was like, are you really trying to help people? Or are you just trying to make a dollar? Cause you have like a million followers. So I watched your interview and it was very informative and it helps me, helped me to learn more about her story. But did that affect you in thinking like her trustworthiness, like her jumping from different products? Like how did you, I guess, reconcile that or rationalize that for yourself? Very good question. And you know what? And it was actually, it was the jumping from product to product, which, made me feel it was scammy. Because I'm like, child, last year it was this, now it's this, and if the product's so motherfucking good, 
why you ain't still selling it? Because HP sold computers 20 years ago and they still sell computers today. So what's the T? Okay. Going back to um, ignorance and not knowing, as a multi-level marketer, your loyalty is not to the product, but to your ability to market. Okay. So her job is, or not just her, anybody, your job is not to stay one loyal to any product. Your strength is the fact that you are a marketer by trade. So yes, after you market this one product, okay, then another company will come to you and proposition you and say, well, hey, we want you to do for us the same thing you did for this company over there. And we will incentivize you this way. So that is why you see people move from one product to another. And it doesn't mean that the previous product isn't efficient or doesn't work or isn't good. It just means that it is time for me and my business to now move on to the next product. Because yes, there is, the, listen, there is a point where the market does become saturated, uh, oversaturated with one thing. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. But when I found out that it's not about multi-level marketing your job is marketing marketing any damn thing you see what i'm saying that and so once i realized that that was the job and not being a salesperson of a particular project or product it helped me break down those walls about calling it a scam because i was the same way i was at first i was selling body matches now y'all selling organo go now y'all selling this it does, I'll be the first person to admit to the average person lacking the information, it does look scammy. And that's why I thought it was scammy, not to mention, and I'm not a fan, I'll be honest and say, I am not a fan of dangling material items in front of people and saying, you too can have this. That was another thing that made me feel like it was scammy because I'm like, okay, girl, you got a $10,000 purse and a $200,000 car, stop going out here dangling this shit in front of poor people, telling them you, you can, look girl, you could get this too, cause no, you can't. It ain't gonna happen like that for everybody. And that's why if you notice with me, my sales pitch is very different and it is very direct. Look, I, I don't know what you're gonna make, but I'm here to tell you, you can make something and the little something is more than what you had. And that's why my pitch is, I don't care. I'm selling tea tonight. A little extra never hurt nobody. <laughs> what I do know with the product in which I'm selling is that if you sell two to three products today, you'll make a hundred, a hundred plus dollars a day. By the end of the month, that's up to $3,000 extra in your pocket. Okay, you don't sell the three products a day. Let's just say you sell one product a day, okay? It ain't that damn hard to convince one person five days a week to buy something for $30. It's not that difficult. In doing so, you can add a couple extra hundred dollars to your pocket at the end of the month. That's the language that people understand. That's more realistic in my mind. And when you look at the average person who is struggling and living paycheck to paycheck, a couple extra hundred dollars is really the bridge they need mm -hmm. in between checks. And so what has been your experience with total life changes? Like, how are you feeling about the products and selling and how you feel about the company as a whole? Mm -hmm. So thus far, I have nothing but positive reviews. You know, what I like about the fact is it's, it's it, you know, another misconception. People think you got to spend all this money and buy all this product in order to be successful in business. $49 is your investment. $49 to become a member of the company and then you buy whatever little products that you want for yourself personally. So to get started, you come out of pocket about a hundred dollars or so. From the moment you sign up, you've got, a, you've got a digital storefront and you can start making money. And like for me, I started making money um, the first day that I set up. What intrigued me was that money that I made on that first day, I was eligible to receive in my pocket the next day. If I wanted, they have daily pay. And again, I just kept thinking about, especially in Miami, the cost of living, how hard it is for people. That is an excellent trait to have to know that, okay, I ain't got to call my sister and ask her, can she loan me $50 to the end of the week? Because I know I sold two things yesterday and that money is going to be in my account. Um, they pay on time. The customer service is great. 
um, all of the people who have bought product uh, up under me that I've been talking to now in this whole detox tea world, they're happy. Thus far, I've been satisfied, not to mention the commissions are great. Like, you really make a decent commission. And I want to debunk one thing too, right? Because a lot mm -hmm. of people say, you know, oh, you got a social media following, so of course people going to buy. That was going to be I a question of mine. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, that, that is very legitimate. Yes, I have a larger reach than the average person walking down the street. However, you can't let that be a deterrent because products sold long before the invention of social media. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, when they were selling, you know, Fashion Fair, Mary Kay, and Avon, that stuff sold long before the invention of Instagram and Twitter. A lot of people get deterred because they don't have 200,000 followers. And you just have to remember, good grassroots marketing. We all have a network. Your network might not be mine. You may work in an office building with 2,000 people in it. That's your network. You might be a PTA mom. That's your network. You might be a soccer mom. That's your network. You might be the HOA president. That is your network. It's network marketing. It is all about leveraging your network, whatever that is. Um, and so I, I tell people that who are interested in the business, you know, if you get so hooked on the social media aspect, you'll let all these other people out here pass you by. You know, I've seen people do creative things like take the tea and go sit in Starbucks and legitimately fix the tea while sitting in Starbucks so everybody can ask, what are you doing? What's going on? What is that? You know, carry it around with you. Take it at restaurants. Talk about the product. But you've got to use the product first because I'm going to tell you one thing about me. I can't sell nothing I don't believe in. I love that approach. And just mm -hmm. to piggyback on that question, do you feel that maybe this isn't for everybody? Because some people may be like, well, I'm not a marketer. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not, you know, super friendly. You know, Miami people, we ain't friendly. So do you feel like, okay, maybe this is just not for you. It's not for, do you have that approach to it as well? It, it most definitely isn't. For, it most definitely isn't for you. But that's not unique to this product. That's unique to any damn job. Being a bus driver ain't for everybody. Being a cafeteria lady ain't for everybody. Being a news anchor ain't for everybody. So that's not nothing unique to this. Yeah, if you don't have the personality type, if you're not, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're shy, scared to speak to people, don't have the gift for gab, this sales is not for you. This is a sales job. It is a sales job. You can't be scared of it. You, the number one, uh, the number one skill set you need is to be able to process rejection and not take it personally because mm -hmm. you're going to receive more no's than yeses. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like talking to people and being rejected, it's not for you. And that is okay. I think where people go wrong is just because it's not for you doesn't mean it's a scam. And just because you can't do it doesn't mean it's impossible for somebody else. Yeah, that's real. I love how you put that. Um, in the video with Stormy, you mentioned your goals. Um, at the very least, you're saying like $1,000 a week. You're like, I'm not trying to come in here and, you know, buy a jet. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk to you about, like, have you reached those weekly goals? And um, how's your team doing with reaching their goals? Mm -hmm. So I've surpassed, I've surpassed the weekly goal. Um, so I've adjusted that goal now to $2,000 a week which I, most weeks I, I hit it or come close. If I don't hit it, I'll do like 18, something close. And I look at it like this, an extra eight grand a month, that's $92,000 a year in addition to my primary source of income. So, you know, there's families that don't make $92,000 a year combined. Um, Self-included. You know, again, I'm doing eight a month. Let's just say if you're the average person out there, if you're doing one a month, that's an extra 12000 a year. That's the difference between you still driving that raggedy car that keep breaking down or you are being able to get another car. You know what I'm saying? It's, and that's how you have to look at it. With any sales job or with any task in life, you must set a goal, an attainable goal. So for me, it was $1,000 a week. Once I hit that 1000 then I pushed myself. I said, okay. This is what I'm currently doing. 
uh, I heard a friend, I got a friend of mine, they call him Mr. 2%. And the reason they call him two, Mr. 2% is because his motto is every day do 2% more than you did the day before. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like that. And just 2% more. So I took my goal. I said, okay, 1,000. Let me do 1,200, 1,300. Once I did that, now I have a new goal and you shift it accordingly. Now, when you come in looking at other people's results and expecting to do the same thing they're doing and you don't hit it, of course, you're going to get discouraged. So I always tell people, to, and this is for all things in life, just not just the, the sales, create small, manageable, obtainable goals and adjust them accordingly as you go. Start off with a goal of selling one product a day. That is very reasonable. That is, but you got eight hours in a day at work, a couple hours after work, it is not hard to push one $40 product in a day. Now, if you can't get one person to buy something for $40 in a whole day, then yeah, this legitimately <laughs> may not be for you. Uh -huh. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that, that, that's kind of how you have to do that. Are there any tools for researching or sales or marketing that uh, the people um, who are on your team or just who work for the, the company are, are provided are, are there any things because i worked in media sales so we would have you know trainings every week and you know sales uh meetings to give us tips and stuff to meet our goals so is there something similar with this company so of course there well the, the marketing component is really outsourced um to the individual salespersons and people don't know and i and i and, and now being in this business i realized i kind of like the business structure me as the person who creates the product I'm responsible for manufacturing and shipping the product. I let the outside people market that product any way they want. And I just mm -hmm. use like Nabisco or Oreo, for example. People don't realize marketing makes the world go round. If you look at a company like Nabisco with Oreo or Hershey with their chocolates, majority of their budget goes to marketing, mm -hmm. to commercials, print, press, events. And the multi-level marketing business, the person with the product says, uh-uh, we're going to shift all that financial responsibility, creative, creativity, and time to the outside person. You market it however the heck you want to, whatever works for you, your people, your region. Of course, people can take, teach you the technical aspects, right? I can teach you the prices, the shipping, what to say, what not to say, the compliance stuff. I can't teach you personality. Either you have it or you don't. No, no, no. I understand that. And then also, too, I guess it would be counterproductive to their model if they're giving you all these different tools because you're essentially a business owner. So it's like, okay, you, you have to figure this out for yourself. I'm just um, a supplier. I'm just a supplier, you know? And yeah. I'm going to tell you, believe it or not, I'm going to tell you two people that I think do really good in this business. Um, and people are going to laugh. Strippers and drug dealers. It's the same skill set. Mm -hmm. It is the same skill set to take this product. I got that good, good. I got that good. I got, I, you know, to be able to take that product and push it to your clientele in such a way where they're moved to buy. Same thing with the dancers. You know, when you go to strip club, that same tactic you use to get somebody to, to get you a lap dance or to go to the boom boom room or to finesse them dollars out of them, it is the same skill set. And so what I like about it is the same thing that I kind of like about the rap business, right? The rap industry has given young men of color an opportunity to earn income in such a way that the greater world would have prevented them from in the past. Mm -hmm. Rap, sports and entertainment have given black people access to things that they've historically been shut out of. The average girl from the projects, the average dude that grew up in the projects, let's face it, they're not going to college. They're not going to, they're not all, not saying that they can't, but let's just keep it real. They've got life circumstances that prevent them from getting six figure jobs, driving Rolls Royces and stuff. Here is something that levels the playing field for me to potentially live the same life of the greats. I look at Coach Stormy and not to keep bringing it around to her. 
she dropped out of school in the ninth grade due to environmental circumstances and life circumstances beyond her control, but is now living the life of those people on Shark Tank, you know, in her private jet, because she was able to take the skills that she learned in the street and apply it to sales. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that regard, we can't be so closed minded as a people that we miss out on an opportunity. And granted, it doesn't have to be the T. If you feel more comfortable with the Avon, go sell the damn Avon. You know what I'm saying? But what we do know, and we can't argue with facts, is that sales is the only business with unlimited income potential. That's so true. You go on anybody else's job, they got a paper in a file that says the most you can make for this position. Sales is the only job on earth with unlimited income potential. That is so true. And I love the point that you made about, you know, people not having certain uh, opportunities and colleges are for everyone. And then sometimes, like you said, circumstances come into play, like what happened with Coach Stormy. And that doesn't mean that she did. She wasn't talented. She wasn't smart. She just wasn't able to apply that in a way mm -hmm. that some of us who have a more structured upbringing mm -hmm. um, have. But she still she still was a genius in the sense mm -hmm. of business, you know, pro. And she figured mm -hmm. it out eventually. So. I love the fact that how you broke that down, like this could be an opportunity for you to make mm -hmm. money, to build wealth, to, mm -hmm. to have a certain, a certain lifestyle that you deserve, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't have to be a career. I don't plan on leaving what I'm doing to sell tea full time. It is supplemental. And we have to diversify our income, my people, yes. um, because you might, you, your job ain't promised. I don't care if you got a government job, that shit ain't promised nothing is probably you see what corona done did people who thought they had secure jobs or secure incomes are now in the damn welfare line mm -hmm. so again a little extra ain't never hurt nobody i don't give a damn where it's coming from just as long as it's coming in legally yeah hey that's real shit mm -hmm. and what i love that you said it's an online business you don't have to have a whole bunch of product and i think mm -hmm. the issue that happened with the skin tea was it was selling and i took it it worked but it took you forever to get the damn product and he was like oh my gosh it's been six months like okay i'm gonna give up on this so mm -hmm. i haven't heard that about this company which is a really good thing because mm -hmm. sometimes you have too much product or trying to wait for it to get shipped it, it was just a, a nightmare and so I will say, you know, you know, full transparency, when you do go on the website, certain products sell better than others and certain products will say, you know, there's going to be a five to seven day, uh, five to seven day delay on shipping due to demand. And then other products, they straight up, you know, if they're out of stock, they don't allow you to buy. It's not like you pay your money, then you sitting there mm -hmm. waiting and they'll say, you know, we'll notify you when the product comes back in hand. Again, it, 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 it it's... It, no scam here. It's just a different way of selling things. That's all. And to be quite honest with you, when you look at now, J.C. Penney don't file for bankruptcy. Neiman Marcus mm -hmm. filed for bankruptcy. Sears went out of business. Jeff Bezos has become a trillionaire in Corona. Yes, he did. Due to online sales, it is the new. It's the way of the world. It is the direction the world is moving in. And so it is best to get be a part of the curve, get ahead of the curve, than to be behind it singing your shoulda, coulda, wouldas when the time came. You know, I'm so honest with this thing. I'm here to tell you, okay, the tea may not be your thing. Find something that is. You know, find something that is. And if you have the gift for gab and the ability to sell it and push it, product, and I just learned this, product makes the world go round. The only reason we work is to buy things. Mm -hmm. That's the only function money serves mm -hmm. is to buy things. People are buying things every day. We buy things. Find something to sell. Man, that's a word. I really appreciate that. And you totally made me a believer. I mean, you have talked offline, so you already know. As soon as I get it together over here, I'm joining the Funky Bunch team. Yes. <laughs> because it, it, you, like you said, it's all about diversifying um, your, your portfolio. And I really appreciate you for breaking that down. And you have 
educated me on this process to help me make a decision. Mm -hmm. And just also too, I wanted to say thank you again for this interview, but also for the content that you put out, the, the perspective, the laughs, you personally brought me out of depressed moments. I clicked on a video and I've laughed, you know, my way back to, to you know, being able to, to get myself going again. So I really appreciate you for the work that you've done and definitely for taking this time to speak with me. Thank you for having me, ma'am. Um, I'm honored. My, my fellow Miami and my fellow Carol City Chief, all that in between. Um, anytime, friend. Anytime. Uh, thank you. Is there anything else that you like to, you know, tell people about that we haven't discussed or touched on? No, you know, y'all, I'm just here around. Just be sure to follow me on YouTube, Funky Dineva, all things social media, Funky Dineva. And, um, if you want to know more about the products, just more about me, you can find it all uh, on my Instagram page or any of my pages for that matter. I, I'm, I'm here. I don't bite. Got any questions, hit me up. I answer as many people as I can. I check my DMs all the time. So uh, I'm here. I love what I'm doing. I love y'all. Thanks for supporting me. And uh, hopefully we all can just get through this Corona thing together and um, come out of this Corona better people than we went in. Mm, That's yes. what I want for everybody.